Welcome to session one of the Prime Tutorials. My name is Christine Vale. I'm the Head of Education for Scholastic Australia. What is being covered in this overview session is what Prime is, where it comes from, and a general introduction to how it works. So, where does Prime come from? Prime is a collaboration between the Ministry of Education in Singapore and Scholastic. The content in Prime is adapted from Singapore's primary mathematics project. This project has been successful in transforming Singapore from an underperforming nature in primary mathematics to being a top performing nation. Prime also takes into account some of the teaching and learning practices from South Korea and Hong Kong, as they are the other two top performing nations in TIMS Year 4 results. So Prime is based on world's best practice in current mathematics education. By way of background information, Singapore has six years in primary school and students must be six years old when they start school. Maths lessons are about 60 to 90 minutes per day. As a resource, Prime is comprised of several components. Central to these are the course books. They contain explicit models of lessons that carefully scaffold instruction. Directly linked to the lessons in the course books are activities in the practice books. They form an ongoing source of consolidation and formative and summative assessment. The teacher's guides are a source of professional learning for many teachers as they explain the pedagogy used and provide models of ways lessons may be taught. The books are also available in an interactive whiteboard format. So why does Prime work? There is no doubt that there are several factors that contribute to a successful curriculum and its implementation. There is also a perception that the approach to teaching mathematics in the top performing Asian countries is due to rote learning and compliant students. While there certainly does seem to be cultural acceptance of the value of education in these countries, what happens in the classrooms of these countries is certainly not rote learning. It is active discussion and involvement with the expectation that all students will achieve to high standards. The pedagogy used is explicit and comprehensive. It teaches students to master skills and concepts at a deep level. It also invites students to actively apply the mathematical skills and concepts they develop to solve mathematical problems. They are taught to actively think through their own and others' solutions. Prime takes what I call a deep dive into concept development. It builds up conceptual development through carefully sequenced and scaffolded lessons that keep reinforcing what students know and then expanding to include new learning. The Prime materials are organised in chapters and lessons. Each chapter in Prime focuses on concept development around one topic. For example, this chapter from Coursebook 3B is about fractions. Within each chapter there are several prime lessons. A prime lesson is a series of daily teaching learning cycles, or what we call daily lessons, that develop a mathematical concept. In this chapter each lesson builds on the concept developed in the previous lessons. So students learn their understanding of fraction of a whole to understand equivalent fractions. Then they use these understandings to add like fractions and related fractions. Then they use their prior understanding to subtract fractions. Often the final lesson is about problem solving. It expects students to apply the concepts taught in the chapter. And that is the case with this chapter. In Prime, as a result of the deep dive into concept development, the concepts taught often exceed the expectations of the Australian curriculum mathematics. In the sample chapter on fractions from Book 3b, the concepts taught in this one chapter actually range across content descriptions from Years 3, 4, 5 and 6 of the Australian curriculum. A similar pattern of going beyond the expectations of the Australian curriculum is found in many chapters across the year levels. This is the deep dive I've been referring to. A detailed alignment of Prime to the Australian curriculum is available. The pedagogy used in Prime is consistent and explicit. 
It is designed so teachers are constantly checking how well students understand what they've been taught, and so they're able to differentiate their instruction immediately and remediate and extend where appropriate. In Prime, consistent pedagogy is used to give predictable structure to teaching learning experiences. Icons are used to clearly identify the approach being used. At the beginning of nearly every chapter is Let's Remember. This is a quick review of the concepts that have been taught previously, and it's used to assess whether students have the prerequisites for new learning. In each lesson, the explicit teaching is identified as Let's Learn. It is in the Let's Learn part of the lesson that new concepts are taught, and the course book provides the starting point of a carefully crafted lesson. A critical part of the pedagogy used to teach maths in Singapore is the concrete pictorial abstract approach. Certainly many students in Australia would be involved in lessons that use concrete materials, pictorial representations and abstract or symbolic notation. But what is central to the approach used in Singapore is that these three approaches are always used together, right from year one. What this means is that in one Let's Learn lesson, the students will often experience a sequence of activities that moves from the use of concrete materials to pictorial representation and then to abstract notation. The reason for this is so that the students are able to make direct association between the concrete and pictorial representations to the abstract. In Prime, the three parts of the lesson are represented with the icons MathLab, Picture It, Number Symbols. After Let's Learn, students are guided to demonstrate what they've learnt in the Let's Do part of the lesson. This is also a quick formative assessment that teachers may use to differentiate instruction. For instance, some students may be actively encouraged to use concrete materials to complete the tasks, and others may no longer need them. After Let's Do, students are referred to the practice books for additional activities specifically related to the lesson to reinforce and consolidate what they've learnt. In the approach to teaching maths in Singapore and Prime, students are expected to demonstrate mastery of concepts taught. To do that, the activities in the practice book each assess slightly different aspects of the same concept and vary in the level of scaffolds provided. In this example of activities to do with equivalent fractions, the student's understanding is assessed through five different tasks. In each prime lesson, there is a series of teaching learning cycles that follow Let's Learn, Let's Do, practice books. Many of these cycles would be a daily lesson. Then, at the end of the prime lesson, there is Let's Practice in the course book. It is designed to be used as summative assessment of that prime lesson. Why does Prime develop metacognition? All the way through Prime, students are expected to be conscious of their mathematical thinking and be able to explain it. To help students be aware of their learning, at the beginning of each Prime lesson, students are told what they will learn. And at the end of the lesson, they may look back on these objectives and reflect. What supports students' development of metacognition and makes the course books in Prime explicit models of mathematical thinking is the use of speech and thought bubbles that are used in Let's Learn. They give students and teachers carefully crafted examples of mathematical thinking for use both during the lesson and as a valuable reference after the lesson. In some lessons, there is a think about it activity. They are designed to encourage students to examine other students' mathematical thinking. This is often done by comparing two answers. One answer is correct and the other answer is a common error. Teaching via problem solving is not new to Australian schools. Problem solving has been part of state and now the Australian curriculum and approaches to teaching mathematics for a long time. So what is done in Singapore and the other top performing countries that seem to work? In prime, problem solving is explicitly and systematically taught and it teaches both the problem-solving process and the problem-solving strategies, or heuristics. The four-step problem-solving process provides students with clear steps that need to be taken when they solve a word problem. Understand it, 
plan how to solve it, find the answer, and check to see if the answer is reasonable. In this example, thought bubbles firstly demonstrate the questions that a student would need to think through to understand the problem. When the problem is understood, as step two in the problem, the thought bubbles model planning the strategy used to find the answer. In this case, addition. Step three of this problem demonstrates two ways of finding the answer, using a number sentence and counting on. Both strategies have been taught previously in this chapter. Then, in step four, students are given an example of a way to check that the answer is correct. This step of validating an answer and considering whether it is reasonable is a very important step in problem solving. This mind stretcher is an example of a non-routine problem or a problem that uses higher order thinking skills. This problem has multiple answers. In this case, the heuristic acted out is planned as the way to solve the problem. And having workshopped this problem with several groups of teachers, this is exactly the strategy many of them use. They start cutting imaginary cakes with their hands. Step three shows the way the problem can be solved pictorially. And step four validates the answer. Draw a picture may be used as a heuristic or strategy to represent mathematical situations. Unique to Singapore mathematics is the use of the bar model to represent number relationships. The bar model takes the strategy of draw a picture further to represent the relationship between numbers. There are two ways to represent a bar model. Side by side to represent a part-whole relationship and one bar underneath another to represent a comparison relationship. In this problem, because the two parts in the problem are in the same set, paper clips, the bars are drawn side by side. What the students know is that there are two parts in this problem, 14 blue paper clips and five red paper clips. What is unknown is the whole number of paper clips. And notice that along with the pictorial representation using the bar model, the number sentence and algorithm are also shown. That's the concrete pictorial abstract approach in use. This problem compares boys and girls, so a comparison bar model is used. The comparison bar model lines up the bars one underneath the other and labels the bars, in this case, girls and boys. What the students know is that there are 304 girls and 46 fewer boys. The thought bubble demonstrates the plan and strategy to use to solve the problem, which is to subtract. Using the pictorial abstract link, the algorithm and number sentence are shown to work out the answer. In the second part of this problem, the number of boys is now known. So the two parts that are known are the number of girls and boys. What the student is now looking for is the whole, which is the total number of children. To find this answer, the student needs to add. Once again, the pictorial and abstract are shown together to find the answer. Then, as step four in the problem-solving process, students check and validate their answers. In this case, they use the inverse operations to verify that their answers are correct. The Australian curriculum provides for teachers the what to teach, and it's up to teachers to determine the how to teach. When the Ministry of Education in Singapore put together the materials to support their curriculum, they recognise that it is a challenge for any teacher to be able to carefully sequence and scaffold concept development across all year levels. In addition, it's difficult to create engaging lessons every day and provide meaningful follow-up activities to consolidate learning and be used for formative and summative assessment. So they decided to provide both the what to teach and the how to teach. 
So in Singapore, students and teachers are supported by using textbooks as a resource that demonstrates how to implement the intended what of the curriculum. In the same way, Prime provides this model of both the what and the how to teach through the course books, practice books and teacher's guides. These resources are also available online as interactive whiteboard resources. The course books are the key teaching resource in Prime. They provide carefully sequenced and structured modelled lessons. In this example for learning to add, the Math Lab icon and the image of straws is an indicator for teachers to use everyday materials, such as straws or sticks for hands-on experiences of addition. Then the Picture It icon indicates that there needs to be a link made between the hands-on and the pictorial representation of Counting On. And finally, the hands-on and pictorial representations are related to the abstract through the use of the number sentence and number bonds. While a model of developing the conceptual understanding is provided, adding 23 and 2, the example is just a starting point. In the classroom, it is expected that students would manipulate many numbers to get an understanding of the concept, not just the one modelled. At the beginning of a prime chapter, there's usually a let's remember. This is an opportunity for the students to refresh their understanding of the concept and for teachers to do a quick formative assessment and some possible remediation before introducing new learning. The outcomes for each task are listed in the teacher's guides with reference to the previous chapter in which the concept was taught. In the teacher's guide, there is plenty of professional support that should be a refresher for experienced teachers and very supportive for less confident teachers. It even includes sample questions teachers could use for each lesson to generate mathematical discussions. Also in the teacher's guides are answers for the practice book, along with the objectives and skills for each task. Using this, teachers know exactly what is being assessed and the skills required by students. In this example, the objective for all tasks is the same, but the skills expected to be used are differentiated. At the end of the lesson, there's a let's practice in the course book. This is summative assessment. Even though these tasks may look similar, they are very carefully crafted to assess different concepts or skills. Once again, the subtle differences between tasks is specifically listed in the teacher's guides. There are four components to Prime Mathematics. Each level consists of two course books, practice books and teacher's guides, called A and B. And interactive whiteboard versions of the books are also available. Each book is approximately a semester's work. The interactive whiteboard version of Prime replicates the course books, practice books and each page is linked to the lesson notes in the teacher's guides. It makes parts of the materials easily accessible for a whole class or group lesson. But the course book is also designed to be a reference book, both during a lesson and after it is over. This is why they're a compulsory resource for students in Singapore. As many teachers would be aware, students often seem to understand what they're being taught while in the actual lesson. But after the lesson, they may not always find it easy to recall what they understood or why. Because the course book explicitly models developing concepts and skills and metacognition, it is a valuable reference after the lesson at school or home. In terms of purchasing Prime resources, you may purchase the books from Scholastic or your bookseller. However, the interactive whiteboard component is only available through Scholastic as schools need to be set up through the Scholastic Learning Zone portal. There are many factors that contribute to the success that Singapore and the other top performing nations have in primary mathematics. And there are many approaches to teaching maths that are used in Singapore that are also used by teachers in Australia. But there are also some differences. And hopefully, by using Prime, some Australian teachers will be able to benefit from understanding the way students are taught in the top performing countries and use it to enhance their own students' understanding and enjoyment of mathematics.